go ahead. Sure. Thank you so much, Colleen. As we all know, it's very important uh, to know the rules, especially when we're in big meetings like this one. So let's quickly start with our test dialogue for tonight, cheating in online environments. I'm so happy to see so many of you. That means it's an important topic to, to talk about. So let's start and present our subject matter experts for tonight. Thank you so much, Livia, for joining us tonight. Uh, Livia Pataki is an EMP instructor at York University English Language Institute and a postgraduate professor at Centennial College at the Center for Part-Time and Online Learning. She has worked as an EAP and ESP, ESP lecturer in higher education for eight years in Canada and as an ASO lecturer and coordinator in further education for nine years in London, UK. She's a certified online learning course developer by TESOL International Association since 2018. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Livia. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming in tonight. Thank you. It's a pleasure. And our other subject matter expert for tonight is Mitra Rabi. Uh, Mitra Rabi holds a PhD in applied linguistics. TEFL and TESOL with over 28 years of teaching experience at the post-secondary level. She is TESOL Canada and TESOL Ontario certified English instructor with 10 publications and over 20 presentations. Currently, she's teaching in Ueli at York University and CELS in Seneca College. Thank you so much for coming and joining us tonight, Mitra. Thank you, Loretta, and thank, thank you, you, Colleen, for your really you know, sincere efforts just you know, to have this session tonight and thank you to everyone i see 34 <laughs> attending tonight including us four of us so that's really you know great and we i'm, I'm so excited just you know to be with you guys thank we you. all are <laughs> yes <laughs> we're looking forward to this session thank you everybody so let's immediately start with our introductory questions the very first one is what types of cheating are most common in your fields of work now, before we start with a discussion on this question, we have a poll. So this is our poll question. So I'll launch a poll now. I'll open the polls and please take your time and think about types of cheating. What are the most common types of cheating? There are multiple choices that you could make. So here you go. Okay. <laughs> so here it is, plagiarism. <laughs> That's 96% uh, of you um, think that plagiarism is the most common one. But then we also have misinterpretation, misbehavior, falsification, and then fabrication. Loretta, can you read the percentages out loud? We can't see it. Really? Um, yeah, sorry. That's downfall of Zoom meetings. I can. Uh -huh. uh, okay, so it's uh, plagiarism, 96%. Mm -hmm. misinterpretation 18 percent mm -hmm. then comes misbehavior 11 percent fabrication seven and falsification seven percent perfect thanks so much loretta wow. a bunch of people in the chat are saying they can actually see it i think it's just me everybody but loretta okay. i appreciate you reading it out anyways <laughs> that's a pleasure great <laughs> thank you so much for your feedback everybody so now i'll be asking livia and mitra what about you what do you think what types of cheating are most common uh, in your fields of work. Mm -hmm. Over to you, girls. Okay, mm -hmm. so I, I'm going to start this question. So um, I think there is a fine line between the different types of cheating and, uh, you know, it, it's very important to know which one is actually what, what does it represent. So these are the five most common type of academic dishonesty practices and, and obviously we need to be aware of it. So um, plagiarism is using another person's words or ideas without appropriate citation. I think we all know that by the percentage that it's 96%, I guess everybody is familiar with the uh, plagiarism issues. Fabrication would be like making up data or results or information or numbers or recordings. Um, uh, you know, and reporting them as authentic, whilst they are not authentic, they made up, right? Falsification would be manipulating the research data. Um, so portraying it inaccurately um, into one's favor. And the misinterpretation would be falsely representing oneself or efforts. The misbehavior, I think the second one in the top three is uh, most common. When student misbehavior would actually mean that students are acting in a 
inappropriate way in a testing scenario or an assessment scenario. And this may involve many different types of things. It could be that they are working together, they copying from a source, or you know, they're using maybe some kind of learning tool. Maybe they are in an online assessment scenario and they using their mobile phone, cell phones, or a tablet to look up questions, perhaps. So in my practices, because I have been working in uh, higher education, colleges most of the time, uh, the most common one is definitely plagiarism. And, you know, there are different ways to tackle, you know, plagiarism. You know, we all know about the Turnitin tool, um, which we know that there are pros and cons to it and advantages and disadvantages with the Turnitin. Sometimes I really question that, can we really trust Turnitin? <laughs> But, uh, you know, there are other, other ways of finding out when learners are cheating. And uh, you can tell from, if you know your learners, you can tell from their learning journey and their progression throughout your course, whether, you know, the work, the level of work that they submit, it's actually, uh, you know, aligns with their performance in class. So you would, you would be able to spot it if there is a, a non-alignment or a, there is something fishy going on. So uh, that, that's from my part, mostly plagiarism and maybe misconduct in, in, in my uh, work, Thank in my you. fields of work. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Mitra? Yeah, I just want to add, you know, uh, a point that I was just preparing, you know, my notes today. And I just, you know, popped up with this uh, really great quotation from Trip Gabriel in a 2010 New York Times article stating that the internet may be redefining how students understand the concept of authorship. So mm -hmm. this is, you know, one of those problems that our students, may, even, you know, coming from different cultural backgrounds, mm -hmm. they do not have, let's say, you know, a specific definition for the term of authorship. So I think this is us, the teachers, the instructors, that we have the responsibility of clarifying mm -hmm. these concepts and all the relevant ones to them. Mm -hmm. So just continuing the quote, it says, online cheating detection methods are currently employed by national institutions, but according to Paul Kraft in a 2010 Washington Monthly article, in the minds of some administrators, forcing all the students to use Turnitin runs counter to their trust and expectation of high quality work. Mm -hmm. So these are, you know, something that I think we have to be very careful, even, you know, if we ask our students to submit, you know, their, for example, research paper, their assignments through Turnitin. For example, at Seneca, we have safe assign. So you know what, they are not 100% reliable, right? So yes. it's better just to create, you know, a great bonding between students and us. And you know what, just having, you know, the morality of being honest and mm -hmm. follow the academic integrity, you know, all over the college and the institution that you're working with. This is, you know, my suggestion. Now let's mm -hmm. see, you know, what others actually are having, you know, Oh, I think Mitra is frozen, but we want to invite the audience members, please, if you'd like to respond to this question out loud, raise your hand. Remember, the reactions button is located at the bottom of your screen. If you click reactions and then click raise hands, we'll call on you to speak out loud. But if you would prefer to write in the chat, we'd love that too. You can say your experience or ask a question or engage with us in the chat as well. All right, so we have one new message. Uh, Susan says, most institutions detail academic integ integrity in every course outline and also discuss this in class. And TAs also emphasize this throughout the course. So kind of speaking, I think, to Livia's point, right? And also Mitra, mm -hmm. especially when you're in a higher education setting, I think that's the norm. Yeah. Yes, I agree. And I agree with Susan, sorry if I may add that this is so important to be transparent about this. And, you know, it's the best practice to actually share this. What, does, what is plagiarism? What are the consequences of plagiarism, right? So there are certain levels of level one, what happens, and then the next step and the next step. So I think institutions, they really need to be transparent with this. And most, most are, most are. So learners would know the consequences of, mm -hmm. you know, misconduct or plagiarism. 
yeah. yeah, yeah. So Susan is hundred percent spot on. Yeah. yeah, I agree with that. Okay, so we've heard a little bit about higher education. I'm curious about other ESL fields. Is anybody from Link or ESL, uh, private institutions? How do you guys deal with cheating? I do really want to know that how is it going to be, you know, like in Link yeah. school, in ESL school, because, you know, mostly we were working, you know, I'm still working, you know, with the colleges and, you know, universities. So it's better just, you know, for you, any one of you just sharing your experiences with us, how it's going to be like, you know, in Link. Well, I'm, I'm a Link instructor. I, I had my hand yes. up, but I don't think anyone saw that. Oh, sorry, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Christine. Yeah. Sorry. That's okay. I didn't, I didn't I want to. I thought that you are clapping. Yeah, it was no. a clapping. Did I do the wrong one? <laughs> you did oh. do the wrong one. That's why oh, I was thinking that I was clapping. <laughs> I don't have a hand. I don't oh, okay. see. Uh, okay. Anyway, I'm sorry. I only have it's like a okay, thumbs yeah. up and a heart and then <laughs> laughing and crying and celebration. So oh, I see the very bottom button. You see Ray's hand? Do you see that yes. button? No, because oh. I was going under reactions. Yeah, it's the very bottom button. So if you go right above reactions, maybe you don't have it. That's okay. Next time you clap, I'll call on you. I'll know. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That, that was now I now I know that's not a raised hand. I really didn't know that. <laughs> anyway, uh, obviously I'm just new online. Well, for a year now, um, and I am a link instructor, and I will say that um, in our school online now that's been the biggest thing and i'm also the pbla lead um mm -hmm. so we're always worried about validity of mm -hmm. assessments and you know are they valid are they not valid it's really tough um mm -hmm. i i have to say that what i do with my i teach two part-time classes so i have a clb 34 class and i have a clb 67 and when i with my six sevens I always just say, you know what, you're high, you're high level English. Um, I trust you. There's no benefit to, you know, you know, if you're looking online to find out the meaning of a word when I'm asking you to guess the meaning of a word, I try to say to them, like, I have a very good rapport with my students. So I'm hoping, and you know, I, I could be naive, but I really don't think I am. Um, I let them know that their learning journey is okay to have mistakes in it. And I even do that with my lower level. I constantly say, when you make a mistake, then I know what I need to teach you. Then I know how I have to help you. Mm -hmm. I said, mistakes don't mean you fail. You know, mistakes are good. I, I don't know how else to say it to them because um, culturally, mm -hmm. I know that there, <laughs> you know, I have some students who will copy or do things, you know, and, and try to help each other and try to make sure they get a good mark. Um, and I try to tell them that that's, you know, when you copy, it's, it's not okay because you're not learning. You're just, you know, you're going off of someone else. So for me, it's just this constant making them feel good about making mistakes. I don't know if that sounds crazy, but that mistakes are okay. We learn from mistakes. You're not gonna be judged. I may not use those words with my lower level, um, but that's the the message I try to get across at, just to build the confidence so that they'll feel OK making a mistake because culturally making mistakes and they're only looking for a grade. And I, I online, I have not been giving any grades. I've only been giving feedback. So they're never looking at a number. They're only getting feedback. And because I'm the PBLA lead, it's action oriented feedback where, you know, how they're going to improve. And then if they make a mistake let's try it again. And so everything's much slower, mm -hmm. but I feel a little more confident that what they're giving me is, is not from cheating. Mm -hmm. Anyway, sorry if I went too long. No, oh, no, great. that's great. Great, appreciate Christine. That. That's great. Okay. Um, thank so uh, thank you so much, Christine. I see that Joan has her hand up as well. So Joan, please feel free to pitch in. Hi, everybody. So I Hi, Joan. I teach non-academic ESL as well, so I thought I would add my voice to Christine's. Uh, I teach occupation-specific language training, mm -hmm. and so that's um, job search-oriented, really. So the stakes are different, and mm -hmm. the motivation is different. And uh, my students know that what they write for me, I, I, I try to show them from the beginning that the kind of feedback I'm going to give them is the kind of feedback their boss might give them. 
Yeah. So then, so then they listen up. Um, but this year, for the very first time, this year I was teaching online all year, like all of us, probably. Um, I had plagiarism. Very first time because before that, when we did writing, we went as a class into the writing lab, and mm -hmm. I looked over everybody's shoulder. And now, of course, I can't do that. So what I decided to do, a couple of things, um, try to get a baseline writing sample from them. And it can't be the resume and cover letter that somebody in the employment office wrote for them, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I actually use Zoom time to ask them to write something during the first week. Mm -hmm. And they don't have to, I don't have to watch them write it, but by limiting the time, they don't really have time to go online and figure out, you know, how could I say this better? Um, mm -hmm. And I ask, a, a, ask them to write something about themselves, which is not so easy to find online anyway. And then when I have that baseline writing, and I tell them, this is, you know, this is your starting point, um, I can sort of see when later they are writing differently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And here's another tip. Uh, the way I caught the first plagiarism was I thought to myself, this looks like a better level than this guy usually writes. So I took a string of his words mm -hmm. and just put it in Google. And yeah. up popped the site. I do that. <laughs> Yeah, so you don't have to do turn it in. I mean, I don't even have access to turn it in. I'm sure the link teachers, or I imagine the link teachers don't either. So that while that's an option for some, it's not an option for all of us. So we can just use Google. Yeah, thank you so much, Jim. I agree. Um, for the sake of time, we have to move on. There were a couple of notable comments in the chat I wanna quickly talk about. So somebody said at IELTS, they're finding that it's a difficult situation but it's different than cheating. Students try and pre-write their answers. That's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Someone else mm -hmm. talked about a little bit about Lincoln so that they agree you have to be very clear about the directions that you give. And uh, lastly, someone was mentioning that perhaps we're seeing more cheap cheating because of burnout. So mm -hmm. thank you for sharing those ideas. I wanna hand it back to Loretta. Wow, oh, that's a great discussion. <laughs> um, and we have a lot more questions to cover tonight. So here is our second poll. Um, what, in your opinion, are the most probable causes of cheating? So why do students cheat? Mm -hmm. so let me launch the poll this time and let's see. Let me share the results. So the very mm -hmm. first one is it's interesting, we have lack of confidence and lack of subject knowledge, 26% yeah. respectively. Other, mm, that's interesting. So there are other causes, we'd like to hear that. And then laziness, 17% and test anxiety, 9%. Very interesting, thank you everybody. Okay, good. So what do you think, uh, Livia and Mitra, what about you? Uh, I'm gonna go first on this one. Would you like to, Richard? Sure. sure. Yeah. So, oh, so yeah. yeah. Okay. So, for causes of cheating, I mean, the first first step really to understand the matter why why learners cheat in an online learning environment is to understand that it's a totally different learning environment, right? So, the whole learning context changed, the place of learning changed, and it requires a unique skill set for learners to be to foster in this type of in environment. So, they need to learn technical skills, they need to have technical skills, they need to have a, the knowledge of the technology the knowledge of the learning management system, whatever you are using for your learning management system. They need to have certain level of learner autonomy. They need to be able to manage their time, right? So there is uh, different skill sets that they need to foster in a in an online learning environment. So successful, a successful online learner is a very different learner than a, a learner, a successful learner in a traditional face-to-face -face class. <clears throat> Not to mention, I saw it in the chat that there is a cognitive overload. So, uh, you know, things, uh, things take time, things take longer, uh, you know, teaching is slower and, you know, it's just a, a much more difficult, more challenging uh, learning environment. 
So one of the causes of the cheating, maybe one of those that I mentioned, that maybe learners, they don't have the technological knowledge to even assess the online assessment. Number one, I had this today, <laughs> that the learner didn't, didn't access, um, couldn't access because it was a link and she couldn't click on it. So some of the students, they don't have the te technological knowledge to assess the online learning assessment. Some of them, um, maybe their self, you know, their, their self-perception, um, is that they will not be able to cope with the assessment and they won't pass. And therefore, they, you know, they tend to move to, you know, tools of cheating. Um, and this is, again, I want to add with the previous question that this is quite cultural. You know, certain learners from coming from South Asia, they, they have um, this, concept, this concept that they can only be successful if they score 90 plus on the assessment. And once in week one, we read them the course objectives and the course outlines and the criteria, obviously, you know, they become um, shy maybe, or their self-perception changes that probably they will not be able to cope with the assessment. So that is one of the reasons. So the cultural background could be also a reason. Um, but um, at the end of the day, Causes of cheating could be, we try to list four, the most four, most common, uh, the four most common causes of cheating, but it's definitely in an online learning environment. The reason is uh, it's a totally different uh, learning environment. It has a uh, totally different constraints on the teacher and as well as on the student. So we, we need to actually understand that first before we explore the causes um, really. So self-perception, lack of self-confidence, a cultural background, uh, their own confidence levels, and lack of subject knowledge, and sometimes laziness, <laughs> sometimes laziness. What, what, what do you think, Mitra? But just adding, you know, to what you said, because I, I'm just reading, you know, the notes mentioned yeah. by the participants there, and I uh -huh. wanted just to share this one that one of our respected participants says that I said other because they don't have enough time for one reason or another, for example, work, family, procrastination uh -huh. and they need to finish in a hurry so that's you know enough to say that okay i have for example to submit it tonight and i have had you know too many things to do so you know what that's going to mm -hmm. be you know the best strategy for me just you know what let's just do it tonight or today or for this one and maybe you know for the others yeah. i'm just trying to manage my mm -hmm. time but then again it's going to happening again and again like a habit so this is something that they have mm -hmm. to learn when they join the academia and when they go, for example, to Seneca College, not, for example, to Centennial, okay? So even, mm -hmm. you know, the school's policy, this is, you know, one thing that they have to learn from the very first day that they enter, you know, that place. Mm -hmm. This is just my suggestion. And I wanted just, you know, to uh, say that, John, I agree with you, time, yes. And always the students come to us with the stories, right? That teacher, Mitra, instructor, you know what? This, that. And you know what? Always these things happening one night before the due date, right? Or just a couple of hours before the due date. So I'm always mm -hmm. flexible. And I tell them that, guys, just let's try be honest, okay, with each other. So if you can't finish, for example, something in due time, so just let me know. But you know what? Not one hour before the deadline. At least one day or two days before in advance. That's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any I other really ideas? Maybe, you know, our friends having, you know. Oh, yeah. They're having a yeah. great discussion. In yeah, here. I, I was, know. I, I can see it. Up <laughs> and I couldn't keep up. It. I yeah, I was just. It. It's amazing. Yeah. I was yeah. just reading on Monica's comment that fear. You know, most of yes. fear, right? So, yeah. so most of the students, like in my experience, 99% of our student population at, at UALI are from China. And really, uh, and some other people also mentioned it in the chat that, you know, so, some of the students, they come here, they choose a subject. They don't really choose the subject. Their parents choose the subject, <laughs> what they should be studying. So obviously, if they don't have interest in the subject matter that they are about to learn, right, at university level or college level, they're not going to be able to cope. So they're not going to perform as well as if they actually have interest in the subject matter, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, most of them are provided a provisional uh, visa or a temporary visa, depending on their performance, right? So they have to pass the course. 
otherwise they are sent back. So I think Monica yeah. uh, pointed this out beautifully that, you know, fear, fear can be very powerful and they, they are scared. So, and this links into what I said about their self-perception, lack of self-confidence that they won't be able to cope with the assessment. So a great chat and great input to everybody. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks, <Sylvia. laughs> All right, I wanna turn it back over to our lovely participants now. Um, we're all in this field and I think we can all contribute so much. So please, if you'd like to share an experience, um, a suggestion, a question, anything, mm -hmm. please feel free to raise your hand and I will call you out or you can always just put the information in the chat and you know, I may not get able to read it out loud but we are reading, we're all taking it in and we love what mm -hmm. you're saying so far. Yeah. All right, so I'm just looking in, um, in the participants. I don't see anyone with their hand up yet. I'm being hopeful, but I missed select a couple of um, comments to read from the chat then. Um, so Georgina says, pressure from outside sources to be overachievers. We talked about that. Fear mm -hmm. and pressure kind of go hand to hand, right? Um, and Christine said, I teach only women and the competition between the women in my class and in their community is huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially mm -hmm. sometimes in certain cultures, we can find this competition. Mm -hmm. Or even family life, you know, my husband tells me I need to work harder and I'm trying, you know, I'm mm -hmm. doing my best. Mm -hmm. I had a, a cute husband and wife that used to compete. It was friendly. But the point is competition is there. Yeah, okay. definitely. Yeah. Uh, I'm going back to the participants list. I don't see anyone with their hands up yet. Yeah. But um, remember, if you'd like to contribute, feel free. Just very quickly, I wanted to add something on Mahmoud's comment, lack of ethical perspective of cheating. And I just want to add one more idea. I know that don't talk too much, right? <laughs> but the ethical perspective of it, that they have lack of ethical perspective. So what's cheating in Canada is a totally different thing in China or in Vietnam or in Europe, right? Um, actually, I have spoken extensively with my, with my students from China, and they said that in, in, in their university work or in their field, in education field, it doesn't count as cheating if they copy something out. Right, and they don't don't need to reference it. It, it doesn't count. So it's it has a, as Mahmoud pointed it out, it's you know they don't understand what cheating is, right? So they don't understand the concept of plagiarism. Okay, mm -hmm. that's it. I think that that that's <laughs> Thank great. Thank you, Olivia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just Christine, to Christine, I saw that you had your hand up. Please go ahead. Oh, okay, great. Because I I clicked. I finally my I asked my son to help me. <laughs> <laughs> so he showed me how to raise my hand and then I just said to him I raised my hand but it's not showing but I guess it showed but I don't it see did. it, it did. Anyway, okay that's good um I just wanted to say that one thing that one of my um the regional coaches uh in my PBLA forum she had talked about cheating and had said she doesn't even like to use the word cheating she uses um misappropriate helping <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that was very sweet. I said, oh, my goodness, that's so politically correct. Positive. Because, you know, in when you think of the motivation, like that's what I, I, I always try to I really, really try to empathize with my students because, I, you know, I don't know where everyone's coming from and I don't know the pressures they might be feeling or even just and because I teach only women, they do get I mean, I've I've had some of my my learners tell me that, you know, some of my friends are saying, you know, why are you still in link? Like, why haven't you gone to college? Why haven't you done this? Why haven't you done that? And, you know, she'll say, I, you know, I was going to leave the class, but I didn't know what to do. And, and I just said, you know, you have to do what feels right for you, but oh my God, the pressure is huge. So if someone really wants to, like I saw in one of my, my three, four class, when one person graduated to the level four, you know, everyone was looking around and scrambling saying, okay, she graduated. What about me? What about me? What about we, you know, and they're not, they're not realizing that, you know, as a teacher, you have the assessments, you are doing the, and everyone is different. And, you know, some people stay longer with me in link. Um, they might've come from literacy. So, you know, there, there might be some, some, it's just a little slower road to get to the other levels. And sometimes they don't always get up to those higher levels. Um, but some of my other students don't realize that. So the pressure they feel within family, within the community, they're all like kind of egging each other on to like, why are you still in level three? Like, why aren't you in level four? So I really think that might be a motivation as well to just copy or, you know, take something from someone else or ask someone the answer. And I am finding it a little, you know, difficult online and I do one thing I learned from my PBLA uh, forum is to 
to literally ask them like so that they become a little more accountable like did you do this with help or did you do this alone so i will send that and if they say i did it alone then I will actually, you know, I, I, I will download the email and I'll put it into their folder because I don't know how, what else to do to, to know 100% that something is valid. So mm -hmm. I have to trust that, that they're telling me the truth. And I have had many students say, well, mm -hmm. my son helped me a little bit, you know, or so at least you kind of get a feeling. And then I say, well, that's okay. It's okay if someone helps you. Um, I just like to know if someone helps you so that I, again, I put it all back on me. So I know how I can help you too. Yeah. So that they don't yeah. feel they're doing anything wrong, but that they know that if they get help, they have to tell me. Yeah. And again, I don't know if that's right. I don't know what to do. So that's why I'm, I'm here tonight, hopefully to gain more, <laughs> but I, <laughs> more I insight. I think tonight's not about what's right or wrong. It's about us talking as a group, because I want to talk about what Renata in the chat said. Renata said, some of my students think cheating is the equivalent of being resourceful, mm -hmm. right? That's yeah. a great, point. and then someone else mentioned, well, cheating is cultural. In certain mm -hmm. cultures, what we consider cheating is being a very smart student. It's spending mm -hmm. your time wisely, mm -hmm. right? So okay. I, I love that point. <laughs> cheating is fully cultural. And we're here today to talk about how you, you feel. Maybe you don't think something is a form of, well, as long as it doesn't go against the policies. Maybe we don't think something is a form of cheating. Like group work, is that cheating? Mm -hmm. No. Do you know what I mean? But they're working together. Sometimes you have a stronger student than a weaker student. So really interesting stuff happening in the chat. I love it. Um, but Loretta, I, for the sake of time, I think we should move on. Yeah. And as Christine was mentioning, we're, we need to know now prevention strategies. And that's our next set of questions. So absolutely. What are, um, what are the tools we can use? What are some strategies that are used in our field of ELT? to tackle plagiarism and um, cheating. Livia, Mitra. Yeah, I'm just gonna go with this one. So mm -hmm. again, preparing, you know, the materials for this presentation, we found, you know, really interesting uh, documents, research papers, and I wish, you know, I had more time just, you know, spending and reading more and gathering, you know, the information. So just to be short, and then, you know, let the ground to you, the audience. So. The three ways that we can actually, you know, have in hand in order to control it, because it's something like relative. We cannot even, you know, having the best, let's say, you know, technology in online, even, you know, we are in class and we see that sometimes the students, you know, commit plagiarism doing, let's say, you know, some cheating type. So mm -hmm. I think the first strategy is going to be policing. So it is meant to catch and punish the student who mm -hmm. practices academic dishonesty. But again, punishing, I do not mean that, let's say, you know, traditional punishing. Okay, so mm -hmm. just we have to be very careful about using, you know, this. For example, you can maintain the security of your, let's say, you know, exams or the assignments that you're asking them to do. Or for example, proctoring the assessments. This is, you know, one of those things that we have, you know, in ULE, even, you know, it was maybe, you know, at the beginning, very problematic, very challenging, but, you know, mm -hmm. both of us, the students and us, you know, got used to that. So it was really good. We have, you know, just monitoring, even, you know, the students' rooms, tables, desks, everything. And you know what? And then we had the record of what the students, you know, did in that two full hours sitting for the exam. We can use different formats of the test. We can mm -hmm. plan, you know, fake or mock tests, right? Mm -hmm. Before, you know, doing, you know, the real one. Setting time for doing, you know, the assessment and the test. That's really, you know, important because sometimes we take it like, you know, open books and we give them, you know, one week. So can you imagine one week? I think that's really, you know, a big interval. So, you know what? They have, you know, different social medias apps. They get into touch together. Okay, question number one, question number two. But even, you know, you give them this time, this window, but still, if you just, you know, randomize your questions, use different types of questions, creating, you know, a pool of question, a bank of question, as just, you know, selectively just, you know, uh, put, for example, for group A, group B, group C. So that's going to be, you know, one of the strategies in policing. The other one is prevention strategy, but what does it mean when we say preventing, you know, cheating? It means limiting opportunities for students cheating. 
how would it be possible again recognizing you know the disadvantages of online assessment so we know that okay mm -hmm. guys we're going to do you know for example the online testing or the exams or the quizzes but mm -hmm. listen you know again we have to remind our students that according to the strict policy of the school right and the net tickets that we discussed for example in the very first session so guys we trust each other so i want you just you know to focus for example on the task to set the time you have only two hours you know to finish the test so this actually you know giving them that hey you know what i have to be focused on finishing completing my exam because i have had and you know just last week I told them that you have two full hours to finish your essay, okay? Mm -hmm. And I told them a couple of times that, guys, everything should be done before 6.30 p.m. And then I noticed that two of them, after 6.30, emailing me that, Mitra, I cannot submit. I said that, hey, time management. I told you everything should be done before 6.30. So I know that it's going to be pressure. But, guys, we are teaching, you know, adults, right? Again, Mine is based on my experience, mainly, you know, with the adult learners. Link is going to be totally different. And I know that Link also are adults, but they are mm -hmm. different from the students that I am teaching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Designing effective assessments, use different assessments or questions, as I told you. Mm -hmm. Developing grading rubrics. So this is actually, you know, very important. And again, Based on my own experience yesterday, I received, you know, an email from a student saying that, hey, Mitra, you know what? I think that you didn't give me a fair mark for the last assignment based on my reasons. Can you imagine that the student saying that based on my reasons, I think that you didn't give me a fair mark. And then I said that, excuse me, the rubric that I developed and designed for the final assignment was totally different from the one that we use, for example, for assignment one, assignment two. Some of the students do not have a clear picture about what? About the rubrics. They think that, okay, one rubric fits for all the assignments. No, again, this is my responsibility to clarify everything. And if we go you know, to the last strategy, it's called virtue integration. And it means, you know, promote learning through online, let's say, you know, assessment, link academic honesty to students' career goals in the future. This is exactly what we do. Like in transfer skill assignment at Seneca, we want our students to learn and apply whatever they are learning now in communication course to other concurrent courses and also to their future workplace build positive relationship with their students, then students don't want to break it, right? By cheating. So this is, you know, the morality, the ethical aspect of cheating. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, what I wanted to share with you. So for sure you have, you know, more. I think Mitra summarized it beautifully. So I only have like three, three practical ideas to add to that yes. because we talked about the research. This is what I do. Easiest way, guys. Um, how you want to prevent. Uh, focus, no, don't try to focus on catching the students, okay? We cannot control students' behavior, okay? If they want mm -hmm. to cheat, they're going to cheat anyway, right? The, the things that worked for me, setting a time limit, mm -hmm. randomizing the questions when I'm giving quizzes, I'm actually tried this semester to personalize the links, which means mm -hmm. that every student gets a different link with different uh, questions. And I know that's crazy and that's super time consuming, but it works. And I give you an example, vocabulary teaching, everybody uses Quizlet. On Quizlet on the left-hand side, the sixth function is the test function. When you click on that test, it generates a link. You can test your learner knowledge on a set that you have uh, pre-assigned to them to learn, right? Now, what I started to do is I generate the test, I click on, I copy the link and I give it to one student and I generate another link and another link. And another. So every single student has a totally different quiz <laughs> with different questions, right? So, so this is one of the ways and Quizlet is a wonderful platform to actually allows that. So these are the things that normally work for me, you know, set a time limit. Uh, set a time frame maybe that, uh, you know, the student ne uh, needs to complete the assessment within an hour or within two hours. And then, you know, just give them a good time limit. Try to personalize the, the assessment. Try to link the assessment to um, 
learning objectives so the learners would actually know why they are doing the test. So it shows to them what, what is that assessment as a building block in their learning journey, right? So they understand why they are doing it. Most, uh, one of the research actually says that most of the learners, they cheat, they tend to cheat if they don't understand why they have to do that test or it doesn't make sense to them or they don't know how they're gonna benefit from the test, right? Um, and the last thing that I wanna say, assessment, testing is learning. And if you, you know, if you send this message to your learners that they can learn through the test, they can learn through an assessment, I think you can only win. And that's it. that's it from my part, because I know we have a lot, <laughs> a lot more questions. And thank you, everybody. I love Queen. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Livia and Mitra, thanks. That's awesome. So I want to quickly turn to um, the audience. If you'd like to respond to this question, I'm not going to lie, Loretta, I forgot what the question is. Can you tell me what it is again? <laughs> Pardon? Uh, what the I question forgot is. what the question is. Yeah. Prevention, <laughs> prevention strategies. Yeah, there we go. Prevention strategies. So if you'd like to respond to what, uh, to, you know, what, what are some prevention strategies that you use, you can make a list in the chat or you can raise your hand and we'll call on you. So please let us know what are some prevention strategies that you use? Okay, maybe we'll go on to Gunnel then. Do you want to go ahead, Gunnel? Sure. Okay. Um, I normally, every term I, you know, with my students, I talk about plagiarism, how will it affect their uh, work, how will it academically affect their uh, goals and all that. So first I check them to understand what they know, what they don't know. And then I create a visual PowerPoint to show what will be the consequences if they do anything and talk in detail and open to free discussion with the student if they have any question or concern and talk about it. And finally, the following class, I usually do that for the first week. And the next class, I just do a quick um, quiz mm -hmm. and like a pop quiz to find out how much they got out of it because it is extremely important because I, um, you know, I'm, I'm laid off right now, but I used to work at the college. So it's very important for students to understand, uh, you know, how crucial this thing yeah. to know in depth detail, because we have a lot of international students because I teach EAP students and culture makes a big difference in cheating because they do not know. You have to clearly explain everything. You cannot mm -hmm. assume this. They might know, they will not know. No, just think about they don't know anything. Just start from scratch. That's mm -hmm. what I do. Yeah. I think it's always the best method, right? Just assume that everyone is at zero and you teach them what you would like for them to do, period. Doesn't matter where they start. If you start with that point of view, I think it's almost always going to ensure that everyone, at least in that class, will understand what it is that you want from them. Uh, thank you so much. I want to go on to Corrine really quickly. Okay, so while we're waiting for Karina, I just want to read out someone had written something. Um, where is it? Here. Um, Shadi said, be consistent. I think that's a great point. No matter what you're doing, if you're going to teach them, do it consistently so they understand what the expectations are of them. Um, and someone else said, teach how to put quotation marks around the words taken from mm -hmm. someone else. I had to simply cite the author. That's a great place to start. A really great place, depending on what level it is that you're teaching to, though, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so let's find Corrine's answer now. Uh, I think Corrine's still typing. So meanwhile, how about we go on to the activity and mm -hmm. then we can come back uh, afterwards and I'll read Corrine's comments. Right, <laughs> yeah. So as I, as I typed in our chat box, please have a pen or pencil and paper handy because we'll immediately start with uh, a fun activity. Okay, so let's start. Um, We'll talk about the importance of transparency. And we touched uh, a bit on, on this topic. So the activity is this one. What you need to do is that you need to draw a picture of a house. You need pencils or pen, colored pencils and paper. Time allowed, three minutes. And you're not allowed to ask questions from us. Three minutes start now. That is a lot of work happening. Okay. I can see people are drawing. Okay. So, um, I'll stop sharing now and you can share your house. Okay, I can see uh, Anupa. Thank you. Monica, I think Monica is also ready. Go no. Let's see the Gono. house. Wow. Let's see those houses. I oh, see Shadi's house. Oh, nice. 
Shadi, this three days. Margarita, I see your house. I like the tree, Margarita. Margarita, Shadi, Monica. Wow. Perfect. <laughs> oh, that's nice. We love those houses. Thank yeah. you, everybody. Joanne. Oh, look at this oh, one. Wow. Joanne. Nice, that's Joanne. Nice. I love the door, Joanne. <laughs> hey, look at Mark. Mark, Mark, Mark. I like, Mark. That. I like it. <laughs> this is lovely. Christine. Oh, Christine, your virtual background is eating your picture. Christine, yeah. <laughs> wow, thank you. Good job, everybody. Thank you so yeah. much for participating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is great. Okay, good. So now what comes next is that we have to mark. The okay. mark scheme is out of 24. Livia, can I yeah. leave it to you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Now we're going to score out the house that you draw, right? So um, what, for was maximum six marks, you can give, you score your own drawing, right? One to two marks if the house has plain walls. Three to four marks if the house has walls that are brick, stone, plank, so you can see it's visible that it's brick or stone. Five to six points if you put any kind of additional wall furniture, like house number, name, terrace, uh, hanging basket, satellite dish, or anything else. Okay, so that's for the walls. Next. So just write the number. You will have to add up your score at the end. For the roof, you can also have six marks. One to two marks if the house has a basic roof of any description. Three to four marks if the house has a steeply pitched roof or gables, chalet style. Five, six marks if the drawing includes tiles, thatch, dormer, skylight, windows, garden, TV area. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Again, one to two marks if the house has a door and windows. Three to four marks if the house has an arch or covered doorway Archy, maybe, or arched, <clears throat> small windows that are divided into four panes. Five, six marks if we can see the curtains, blinds, shutters, or on the other window feature is shown. And then the last one. I'm admitting Corinne again. Um, yes? Okay. Next one. Garden and landscaping. One to two marks if there are any bushes, flowers, trees on the picture, on your picture that you draw. Three to four if the house is surrounded by a fence, wall has a drive or a pathway leading to the entrance. And five to six marks if there are statues, water features, water fountain, patio furniture. <laughs> I know. Now you're having fun. Right. So I would like to, before we go into the discussion, I would like to ask you and invite people who shared their picture to show their marks. What, what's your mark? How many points out of the 24 did you get? So again, 13, have... Shadi? Yeah. yeah, you can put it in the chat, that's fine. Right. 17. Anyone else, please breathe. breathe. There were lots of issues with this task, we, we know, right? 18, Gonu, thank you so much. Anyone else, what's your score? So Don't we'll... worry, you all pass. Right. You all pass tonight. <laughs> you all pass tonight. 11, 18, 12, okay, wonderful. Sorry, I'm not taking over, Loretta. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, I was just saying. So, uh -huh. walls, garden, roof, all six marks top. So, okay, good. So, yeah, we okay. went through the points of the task. Mm -hmm. So, what problem did you find? Can you tell us? Hmm? What were the problems with this task? Because we talked earlier about making mistakes. So, we made a mistake with this task. Can you tell us what were the problems we had? Mm -hmm. What we gave an assignment to our students, and yeah, Loretta, yes. there are two notes Perfect. in the I, chat box. It says mm -hmm. a lot of details. Okay? okay, so while you know, Livia was giving actually, you know, that okay, you have to rate your mm -hmm. house like this, so it includes you know, a lot Perfect. of details. And also, Christian saying that usually, you know, always she gives you know the assessment prior doing right. you know the task so these are you know some of the possible problems with this perfect mm -hmm. so john is saying rubric yeah. was not disclosed in advance <laughs> no clear guidance for margarita Objectives no criteria yeah. mm -hmm. no criteria from monica great mm -hmm. arenate saying expectations were not clear ahead of time mm -hmm. right yeah Absolutely. What's the success? What's the success criteria, right? right? How can how can you do well in an assessment if you don't know what what's the success criteria, right? And you're not allowed to ask questions, right? Right. Yeah. So, so wonderful. So, right. That we did this on purpose, right? So this activity was organized like this one well, on purpose. So let's mm -hmm. let's talk about this. Has there been a time when you assess learners and then your learner group? did poorly on the task. 
So what was the task? Think about this. Did you share the success criteria beforehand with your students? And what, in your opinion, was the reason for your learners doing so poorly on the assessment? What mm -hmm. could you have done differently to ensure you set your learners up for success and not failure? What could you have done better or differently? So do you have a story to share with us, anyone from the audience, based on what we just did with you now, based on this activity? Uh, Christine has patiently been, wait been waiting with her hand up, so I think we'll go to Christine. Sure. Okay, hi. Um, hi. I was just writing in the chat. Um, <laughs> Uh, I can't remember what I was writing. Um, <laughs> uh, well, number one, yes, you, they have to know what is expected in order to do a good job. And I, um, I actually right now have a, a, men, a student teacher from Humber College. So I've been showing her about how you have to um, make sure that they know, they have to know what to expect. Otherwise, and we're also setting them up for success. You don't want to set your students up for failure. So as a teacher, it's my job. I want them to be successful. So I have to do enough skill building mm -hmm. um, so that they are successful in that task. Um, and that to me is key. So, you know, I, I know a lot of, you know, and I don't know if this is cultural or not. I have no clue. But I know that there are some people who are like, okay, let's give them a test to see, to show them, you know, if they know it or they don't know it. But it's not about that. It's about you want your students to be successful. So as a teacher, I make sure I do enough skill building. If I have my assessment uh, and I know what my assessment is and they know what the assessment is, I make sure I do the skill building that leads up so that they have, I mean, I don't give them everything in that assessment, but I make sure that they have all the tools so that they can succeed. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, what's the point? And I, I, maybe it's because I teach Link and I know it might be different for higher levels because my kids are, I have two sons in university and they say it is nothing like that, mom. It's like <laughs> pass or fail. Uh, you don't learn as you go. It's like mm -hmm. you, you learn something, you do a test. If you fail it, you fail it. If you pass it, you pass it. You don't, you know, there's no learning for assessment. It's all summative at the end. Mm -hmm. So I'm listening to my kids, um, you know, really not liking university because that's exactly how it is. Um, and then I look at PBLA and I don't know how many people are familiar with that, but um, the whole idea is, is assessment for learning. So they learn something, uh, get feedback, grow, see their mistakes. How can they improve? Um, it's such a wonderful, wonderful process. Uh, and, and again, it takes the edge off. And again, it's different, right? So if, if you're in a ac more academic setting, then I'm sure it's very different than what I'm saying. I can only speak for Link and what I experience in Link uh, and, and what I think is really good for my students. But I, I don't know, you know about anywhere else. No, I think that's very fair, Christine. And that's the whole point of this, right? That we we're a membership of 4,500 people who probably have unique experiences. Why not learn from each other? So mm -hmm. we'd love to invite someone else. Thank you for that link perspective. Would anyone else like to share their response from their field or sorry, their sector? Um, I don't see anything yet, but there was an interesting question or a statement. I think it was John who had said that, that the activity was biased towards North American homes. That's a great point. A, a I'm little from bit. Jamaica. Yeah, I'm from Jamaica. Our houses don't look anything like what was described. And that's no. on purpose. Right? <laughs> but it's, it's on purpose. It's supposed to be like that because very often the way that we assess in North America is different than other countries. So we're reflecting that in that activity. So thank you and for that. Colleen, there was actually you know, another comment in the chat box saying that, okay, what about a person who's not living in a, in a house? Okay, <laughs> yeah. so in a condo, in an apartment. So that's going to be totally different. You see? Exactly. So again, culture. You see, we are English teachers. So mm -hmm. one thing about our job that our students expecting us to know everything. Mm -hmm. Am I true? What about you? Do you have the same experience that your mm -hmm. students expecting you as the English teacher knowing everything? This has happened <laughs> to me frequently. And the yep. second one is just, you know, the cultural stuff affecting our job, especially, you know, for me, yep. I'm, I'm an immigrant to this country. Okay. So still for me, every day I'm learning new stuff. Even, you know, with my international students. And when I show that, 
okay, guys, you are from China, you are from Brazil, you are from here, you are from there. Okay, you know what? Let's just try teaching each other and learning from each other. And I see that my students really love it. Yeah. So I teach them, for example, I, I remember once I had students from Korea, from mm -hmm. China, from Japan, from Saudi Arabia, from Iran. So you know what? Just five or 10 minutes before ending the class, we just, you know, write, for example, some expressions, simple expressions. I started with my own language, Persian, and then the Korean student, the Japanese students, the Arab student, you know, going to the board and write. And mm -hmm. you know what? We just mm -hmm. transcribe it into phonetic transcription. And we were able to pronounce it. And we record each other. They laughed at me. You know what? That yeah. was really interesting. And I loved it. So personalizing, you know, Spartan. the teaching experience, sharing, you know, my own story with mm -hmm. my students. It doesn't matter, you know, what age they are, what level they are. This is one thing that I really see it mm -hmm. and experience mm -hmm. it, that they love when teachers sharing their own true, real stories with them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it makes, you know, that bonding really stronger. And, you yeah. know, to me as a teacher, I believe that having a good connection with your students, that's the first step, making us successful in doing our job. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, even, you know, this is full, a bucket full of knowledge. But <laughs> when there is no, let's say, you know, transparency, sincerity, simplicity, in the way that you connect with your students, that's going to be nothing. This is my opinion, okay? Without, yep. mm -hmm. you know, offending anyone or let's say, you know, saying something to someone, maybe, you know, does not like it, okay? Mm -hmm. And back to one of the comments that I read before about, you know, one of those prevention strategies, I said policing, okay? But yes, we're not going to be, you know, acting like a policeman or a policewoman, you know, in class. I hate it. I hate it. But you know what? And that was, you know, the point that I told you, punishment, we do not have, you know, that concept of punishment in our old times, okay? We remember it, okay? I, I, I am from that generation, okay? And I remember, you know, punishment. Having, you know, the pen like this, and I had, you know, a teacher doing that with my classmate, and it goes to almost 30 years ago, but it's still, it's a fresh picture in my mm -hmm. mind. And I mm -hmm. remember, you know, the cries of my friend. So, the punishment that I said, it's totally different from the punishment that we had, you know, in those old days. Okay, thank right. you. Thank God. <laughs> so thank God. That, thank God those days are over, Mitra. <laughs> then we're not allowed to punish the students, right? And, you know, the whole learning journey is actually, we have to turn it to a positive experience, yeah. right? So trying to I foster think we have this. two questions. Yeah, we do. teachers, we, we relationships. We have time for one, unfortunately. Okay. So, Joan, I hope it's okay if we let you go. Okay. Christine, I hope it's okay. You don't mind that we let Joan go and then we're going to go into our breakout room. So for now, Joan, if you'd like to go ahead, please do. Mm -hmm. oh, I would just like to agree that uh, teachers okay. don't have to know everything. And in fact, they shouldn't know everything. And I have a lot okay. of fun with my students showing them that managers at work also don't know everything. And they will mm -hmm. say, I don't know sometimes and that the students should not be shocked if their manager mm -hmm. says that. So, you know, you can teach that right in class. But I also wanted to say, um, let's not be too strict with yeah. uh, rubrics because if we do everything very strictly, like the roof has to be like this and the door has to be like this and so on, mm -hmm. uh, students can't be creative. And there's usually, there's almost always more than one way to solve an assignment. Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, when I teach email writing, I'm supposed to use a rubric that says, write three paragraphs. Well, if you look at the emails that you guys receive when you are writing back and forth with a colleague, they don't have three paragraphs. So we mm -hmm. want to be sure not to be more strict than, you know, more kosher than kosher or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thanks so much, Joan. Thank I really you. appreciate it. For the sake of time, I want to hand it back to Loretta so we have time for our breakout room. So Loretta, if you wouldn't mind. Right, okay. Lots of discussions. Mm -hmm. So um, we had prepared much more. I know, so sorry, <laughs> but we have to move on really because now it's time to discuss about alternative assessments. So what alternative assessments are you currently using or planning to try in the future in your own classrooms? Uh, before I, we start, is any, everybody uh, familiar with alternative assessments? 
-hmm. Or would you like us to talk briefly about it? Livia or Mitra, if you have yeah. anything to share before we yeah. put everybody. Yeah, okay, Livia? Yeah, just one minute before we go into the breakout room. So uh, common practice and best practices in online assessment on conducting online assessment is try to move away from traditional assessment strategies, okay? We won't be able to assess learners with tests only. We, you know, it's a different online, different learning environment. The success uh, criteria may be different, you know, different needs the learners are having. So let's be real. We have to move away from traditional testing. And one of the best practices is actually introducing alternative assessments, different types of assessments that are still linked to your course objectives and the learning objectives. And just to give you an idea, right, uh, don't stay with the, with what, you know, don't, don't stay in your comfort zone. Try to design assessments that are focused on not recalling things from the memory, but application of knowledge, okay? So alternative assessments could be, for example, uh, presentations, um, asking learners, for example, I'm just giving you a couple of ideas what alternative assessments may be. Uh, asking learners, for example, to do a text analysis video presentation instead of giving them a reading, read and complete a worksheet, right? Move away from that. Analyze the text. Um, sh show us the different parts. Um, maybe uh, identify a comparison. Um, these type of uh, text analysis assessments, for example, are very excellent for uh, reading. But there are other, many other types of alternative assessments, like encourages problem solving activities, uh, group work, group presentations, video recorded presentations. So anything that moves away from the traditional testing, but at the same time, you can still assess the learning because that's the whole idea of an assessment that you want to see how much went in. How successful, how successful you were as an educator um, in your, uh, with your teaching. So don't stay in your comfort zone. Um, and this is actually one of the best strategies to prevent cheating in online learning environments, focusing on application of knowledge and trying to come up with assessments that are alternative yeah. to traditional testing. That's amazing, Olivia, right? So we always have to ask ourselves, why are we assessing our students at the yes. end of the day. Great. Yeah. So I'll hand it over to Colleen to uh, put you into breakout rooms and talk with one another. Have fun, everybody. Okay, everyone. So you're going into breakout rooms for 10 minutes. This question on your screen is what you're going to be discussing in your breakout rooms. Okay, so don't forget. We're going to send you in there for 10 minutes. We hope you have fun. Mitra, <laughs> Olivia, Loretta, you're going to get invitations. Say no. Don't go in the breakout rooms. Okay. okay. All right. Go. <laughs> You're not going. All right, everybody, okay, I'm have not going. fun. Make sure you click accept so you go into the breakout room, okay? Lovely. Do Hi, everybody. Hey, guys. So, so, Loretta, I think we're only going to have time to pick, like, five people. Right. Okay. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay. Fast. That's great. I know. There's never enough time. We know that. <laughs> <laughs> and we're sorry about that. So, can we start sharing? Uh, so we'd have like four or five of you share what, okay, I can hear somebody's TV. Yeah, I'm on it, I'm on it, I'm on okay. it. Okay, so if if I could have four or five of you share what you discussed in the breakout rooms, that would be nice. So do we have any volunteers who would like to share the nice conversation you had? Yeah, and you can raise yep. your hands. For and I can, can see Jay Mark. Mm-hmm. Feel free to unmute. We can't hear you yet, Mark. Um, yeah. One person in our group brought up the point of um, doing a video, um, audio video uh, um, assessment. And then another person brought up the fact that some students might be very, very shy and not want to show a video and that the speaking would be the main aspect about it but then my conversation was uh, in Canada we would need for example a job interview we might want the facial to see the body language as well that goes along with it that is also in the CC CLB yeah yeah so yeah. how do we how do we get past that yeah that's a great point thank you so much um, I think Atika, you have your hand up. Please go ahead, Atika. 
Oh, hold on. Let me unmute you. Hold on. There you go. Oh, Atika, can you press the unmute button? Do you see it? Yes. There you go. We talked about timing the assessments, mm -hmm. creating the assessments in a Google, a Google form, uh, uh, using Google Forms to create assessments and exactly time using the timer, the add-on uh, feature that we have. So time the assessment so that to, to reduce, to prevent cheating. Mm -hmm. This is one thing. Another thing we discussed that uh, assessment should be we should create assessment, creative assessments where students can analyze, infer, compare, write their own thoughts and be creative with their own learning process. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that way, this is another great way of preventing cheating. Yes. On standard test, students, uh, learners are more likely to cheat. Mm -hmm. if, we, if we are timing, even writing, if we are timing, they will be more focused and they will be learn to finish the task within that time. Definitely. So these are the two strategies we, we discussed, like the inferring and analyzing, comparing and uh, summarizing, retelling, mm -hmm. things like mm -hmm. that, where there is less, there are no chance of cheating. Like you really have to think and create your own, uh, create your on your own. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you so much, Atika. No, I really please. appreciate it. Would anyone else like to share? We have um, one minute left. No? Um, I want to go to the chat. Then someone wrote something really interesting. Um, so Wendy wrote, use discussion board. Padlet is also a great tool. That's really great to know. So, uh, Wendy also wrote, video presentation is a good assignment. It could be pre-recorded or synchronous. That's really interesting. Um, and lastly, we have Daria, sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Um, infographics as a presentation tool works fine. Really cool. Thank you all so much, everybody. Uh, with that, it's the end of our night. So I want to hand it back over to Loretta to end us off. Amazing ideas, everybody. Um, uh, I really hope you enjoyed discussion um, and talking to one another tonight. So thank you to Livia and Mitra. And if you'd like to contact them, here you have their email and LinkedIn accounts. Feel free to take a picture of it and feel free to connect with them about any further questions and discussions you might have. Okay.